Hi, and welcome to this new section. In this section, we will talk about UI table view. This is probably the most common components of all the iOS applications. In this section, we will talk about UI table view and UI table view data source. Then we will see how to design a custom UI table view cell. And at the end, we will learn how to respond to event to a UI table view using the UI table view delegate protocol. Hi, and welcome to the first video of this section. In this video, we will talk about the UI table view and UI table view data source. We will start with an overview of the final state of the project, and then we will learn how to use a UI table view and as well how to implement the UI table view data source to provide the data to the UI table view. So we left on the previous section a project. The goal of this section is to finalize the project that we started on the previous section. On the previous section, we used the location of the user to fetch relevant articles from the Wikipedia API, but we didn't add any UI to the application. We just printed the title on the console. In this section, we would like to add a UI to this application. And here you can see on the simulator, the final state of the project. We have a UI table view that show all the articles that the Wikipedia provides us. And this is a table view and this table view contains the cell and the cell are customized. So we use it our own layout. So let's start building this UI. Let me close everything and reopen the project how we left on the, at the end of the previous section. Let's start from the UI. So let's select the domain .storeboard, select the view controller, and here from the right, select a table view. It's important to select a table view, not a table view controller, because a table view controller is a different component. So select the table view and drag and drop a table view on top of the view controller. Now we need to define all the constraints. I would like to have this table view as big as the container view. So I set zero for all the constraints. And here we have our table view. There are several ways of customizing the UI table. Some properties, for example, are customizable from the storyboard itself. So we can, for example, change the style of the table view from plain to grouped. That means that the section of the table view are separated. Or we can change the separator that sees the line that is between the cells. For now, let's keep the thing simple and do not change anything and just use the default layout of the UI table view. But still we need at least one cell. So let's add one as a prototype cell. And as you can see, we have immediately one prototype cell here. Select the cell and change the style from custom to basic. As you can see here, we have the default type of cell. We have a basic, right at the tails, left at the tail, subtitle, and custom. Custom is the one that we will use in the next video to completely define a custom layout. And basic is the one that show only one line of text. Then we need to specify an identifier that is like a name of the cell. And the reason for this, then we will see when we talk about the code. Let's call this cell around me cell. Now we need to specify an AB outlet for the table view because we need to call one method from the code into the table view every time that we need to refresh the table view. So let's open the assistant editor and we have immediately here the source code that is relative to the view controller. Select the table view, press the control key on your keyboard and drag and drop into the code. Let's call this outlet the table view. That's it. Now we can focus on our code. So let's select the view controller.swift and close the assistant editor. We need to store the Wikipedia article that we fetch from the API into some kind of data structure inside the view controller. For this example, one array will be enough because we have one list and then we just store this list into one array. So let's create a new property. Let's call this property articles. And the type of the property is an array of the Wikipedia article preview. And we initialize this array with an empty array. Now we can go to the bottom of this file. And when we fetch the articles from the Wikipedia API, we just store this article into this array. And what we need to do every time that we fetch this article, then we need to refresh the table view. And refresh the table view 
It's just simple. We just need to call one method that is called the raw data into the UI table view. Perfect. But one piece is still missing. How can we provide the data to the table view? The table view uses a pattern that is called the delegate. And basically, the table view has a delegate to provide some data. In this case, the delegate is called the UI table view data source. And it's a protocol. So let's configure the table view to use the view controller as a data source. But we need to implement this protocol, right? We can immediately see here the red arrow. So let's create an extension and implement the protocol. We can press the Alt key on your keyboard and click on the name UI table view data source to read the documentation. Or we can press the Command key, click again, and go to jump the definition to see the definition of this protocol. We can see here the list of functions that this protocol defines, and we can see that the first two functions are mandatory, while all the other functions are optional. The first two are mandatory. So let's copy these two lines, these two functions, into our extension and clean up a little bit. So the first method is a table view number of rows in section. This is of course a very important method. This specifies how many lines do we have in this section. On our example, we have only one section, right? And how many lines do we have? We have basically the same amount of a Wikipedia article that we just fetched. So let's return, let's return the count of the array that we have. That's it. The other important method Return. The other method is a table view cell for what index path. And this method is expected that we return a UI table view cell. This is a really important method. So here we need to define what are the components of this UI table view. So we need to create a new cell, set the title of this cell, and return this cell. But luckily, we don't need to create always a new cell. The UI table view has a mechanism to save resources and the cell are reused. So we just need to ask the table view to give us a UI table view cell that can be reused. And to do so, there is a method that's called the queue cell for at index path. And to do so, we need to call a method that is the queue reusable cell with identifier for index path. And the identifier is the name that we provide on the storyboard for this specific cell. That was around me cell and the index path is the current index path. Is that enough? No, we just return a cell, but we didn't customize the cell. We wanna show the title of the Wikipedia article into the cell. Let's take the right Wikipedia articles from the array and set the title on the cell. Is it enough? Yes, I think so. Let's try to run the application and see if I forgot something. No, perfect. Everything works. As you can see here, we have a basic layout. So we have a basic UI table view that shows exactly the title of the Wikipedia article that we just fetched from the API.